Hey, and welcome back to another episode of Abandoned. Today we're going to be covering what was once a giant in the Australian electronics retail market. The single largest technology and consumer electronics store in Australia in its heyday. However, in under three years, an empire that one of Australia's richest people built over nearly 30 years would come crumbling down. As ironically, technology caught up to them and eventually surpassed the physical retailer to the point that it couldn't catch up. In this video, I'll be looking at Dick Smith Electronics, examining its nearly 50 year history from beginning to end and giving an insight into how it failed. What would later become Dick Smith started operations in 1968 in a small premises in a car park in Neutral Bay, an inner city suburb of Sydney with a total capital of only $610 or around $7,500 by today's standards. Initially, the business was focused on installing and servicing car radios. From the moment of opening, the retailer was extremely popular and by 1969, the business moved out of Neutral Bay to other locations in the northern suburbs. In a few years, alongside the original car radios business, Smith opened Dick Smith Wholesale as an electronic store for components and hobby parts. It was the first store of its type in Australia. Before that business started, electronics hobbyists could only buy components from larger wholesale companies, better set up for dealing with commercial customers rather than consumers. In the 1970s, the Dick Smith business expanded its product range tenfold. Earlier in the decade, the CB radio, a two-way radio which was affordable to consumers, became extremely successful in Australia. Dick Smith capitalised on the success of the radio and expanded rapidly in the decade, expanding further off the back of PC sales towards the end of the decade. By 1979, Dick Smith operated in all mainland states in Australia with a network of 20 stores by 1980. With the business expanding rapidly, large companies began to show interest in buying out the chain. One of these was Woolworths Limited, the operators of the Woolworths supermarket chain and the Big W chain of general merchandise stores. In 1982, Smith and his wife sold the company to Woolworths for $25 million or $86 million in today's money, and Dick Smith became a wholly owned subsidiary of Woolworths. Off the back of the growth of the computer market in Australia in the mid 80s to the early 90s, Dick Smith grew to over 100 stores by the mid 90s. However, as the 90s rolled around, the business began to change. In 1996, Dick Smith introduced the powerhouse concept, which was their answer to an electronics megastore. The first powerhouse opened in Bankstown, New South Wales. Powerhouse stores were much larger than regular stores, some of which had a floor space of over 2,000 square metres. The first powerhouse, which carried more than 20,000 products, included a play area for children, an internet bar, a Telstra kiosk, a ham radio shack, and an on-site technical service centre. Powerhouse stores carried a wider range of products in the smaller stores, especially in the computing, auto, visual, and amateur radio areas. And for the first time, they started selling music products. In the late 90s, the company placed an emphasis on opening new powerhouse stores. Several opened around the country in major shopping centres. When the company approached the new millennium, it became clear the company needed to change. In the early 2000s, Dick Smith changed the powerhouse concept to focus on a broader consumer market and less towards electronics enthusiasts. For the first time, the company began to branch out into consumer electronics. Video games, Mac computers, Windows laptops and televisions replaced electronics kits and components. This was in an attempt to compete with established competitors such as Harvey Norman and new competitors entering the market, including JB Hi-Fi. Component ranges shrank and general electronics books ceased to be stocked. Electronics kits were transferred to the small Dick Smith electronics stores. But by now, the business needed a change in an evolving market that shifted towards consumer electronics. And this is what Woolworths found in a review of its consumer electronics division in early 2008. Responding to this, Dick Smith was in for a massive facelift. In the next few months, Dick Smith renovated its flagship store in Westfield Hornsby as a concept under the branding Dick Smith Technology. The store's design and product range was completely reworked, incorporating a much more modern feel while removing all electrical components and much of its tools. 
the business was essentially rebuilt as a consumer electronic store. In late 2008, the new Dick Smith Talks to Textbirds logo and format was rolled out with many powerhouse stores being rebranded to the new unified company logo. As the company entered the next decade, it became very apparent Dick Smith was struggling. In 2010, the company had nearly 500 stores in Australia and New Zealand. In the next six years, all of these stores would be gone. Dick Smith was bleeding buckets of money as a result of the emergence of competitors such as JB Hi-Fi and Harvey Norman. These two companies branching out into the consumer electronics sector at the same time as Dick Smith was. But the local market couldn't handle three brick and mortar retailers competing in a market that was quickly being overtaken by online retailers. In early 2012, Woolworths announced that after the results of a strategic review and a $300 million restructuring, it would close up to 100 Dick Smith stores and sell the business. By September, the company was sold to a strong investment firm Anchorage Capital Partners for an initial cash payment of $20 million and ultimate total price of some $115 million. A year later, in December 2013, Dick Smith was floated by Anchorage on the ASX, becoming a public company for the first time in its history. At the time of the listing, the market capitalization of the company was valued at Australian dollars $520 million less than two years after Anchorage had purchased the company for $20 million. Anchorage initially retained 20% of the shares in the new company, but had fully divested their holdings by September 2014. After the company became publicly listed, the company turned itself around, apparently. In the space of two years, the company doubled its profits from $184 million in 2013 to $327 million in 2015, with revenues exceeding $1.3 billion. Things were looking very good for the company until the end of 2015, when Dick Smith suddenly entered a fast death spiral. In November, Dick Smith told the market that it would write down the value of its inventories by 20% or $60 million, admitting sales had not met expectations. Further, the value of shares in Dick Smith dropped by 80% over the course of three months, and by December of 2015, they were valued at just 30 cents a share. On the 4th of January 2016, a halt in trading was requested. This meant that shares would no longer be held in the struggling business. The following day, Dick Smith was placed into administration. For anyone in America, Administration in Australia is Australia's equivalent of Chapter 7 bankruptcy. Once you're there, it's game over. You're dead. You won't be able to restructure like American companies in Chapter 11. It's essentially a company's final death now. Dick Smith would end up dead. Having failed to find a buyer for the stores, receivers Ferrer Hogson announced that on 25th of February 2016, all 363 Dick Smith stores in Australia and New Zealand would be closed, with a loss of 2,460 jobs. After that day, the business launched a major closing down sale, with significantly marked down prices on goods. The sales lasted for around three months until the stores sold off all their stock, the last stores closing by the 3rd of May 2016. The next day, Dick Smith was left completely abandoned. And for a while, that appeared to be the case. The stores that sat inside shopping centres, the vast majority of Dick Smith locations, especially the powerhouse stores, ended up finding new tenants in the following few months, as all spaces and shopping malls do. But for other stores, particularly the standalone ones, which were among the earliest built, they weren't as lucky. Some of these stores sat abandoned for years before finding new tenants. Others were demolished. Dick Smith's name, however, still lives on. Before the stores closed, it was revealed that Kogan.com, a popular online retailer, had acquired the Dick Smith brand, trademarks, intellectual property, and its online business in Australia and New Zealand for an undisclosed price. On 4th of May 2016, Kogan.com relaunched the Dick Smith brand name as an online-only technology retailer in Australia and New Zealand. The website remains in operation to this day. Why did Dick Smith, which appeared to have a bright future ahead, 
so suddenly enter a death spiral and close its doors while it was making profits year after year. The reasons for Dick Smith's closure are a lot more complex than my earlier episodes have covered. The most obvious one is that Dick Smith, a primarily brick and mortar business, couldn't compete with online consumer electronics retailers like Kogan in a growing era of technology. Yes, that is true for all retail stores declining into supermarkets, but there's a lot more to the story. The main problem with Dick Smith in their final months was their poor cash flow management, particularly in regards to their stock control. I'll give you a little accounting lesson while analysing this. Dick Smith grew, yes, but a really good way to get a handle on how well your growth is being managed is to measure the change in your cash conversion cycle. The cash conversion cycle is the time it takes to sell inventory, collect debtors and pay creditors. It is a great measure to track because it shows how your working capital is changing relative to the growth of your business. The tables displayed shows Dick Smith's cash conversion cycle, with a comparison to JB Hi-Fi for the 2015 financial year. For Dick Smith, you can see, Debtor days, the time taken to collect debtors, slowed from four days in 2013, 15 days by 2015. Stock days, the time taken to collect stock, slowed from 85 days in 2013 to 108 days by 2015. Creditor days, the time taken to pay creditors, slowed from 77 days in 2013 to 84 days by 2015. The most notable one of the lot is the stock days. Dick Smith sold technology-based products that became obsolete very quickly. With a stock turnover of 108 days in 2015, this was very slow for a company that sold these kinds of products. With slow stock turnovers, it led to them paying creditors more slowly as a knock-on effect. Over the three years, Dick Smith also had far too much stock, especially for a retailing business. Again, for a company that sells products which have shorter shelf lives compared to other industries, this was not good. These two factors combined reduced Dick Smith's margin for error increased its debt massively, and left the company completely vulnerable to shocks. A small decrease in sales could mean the company would be unable to pay its creditors, rendering it insolvent. With lower than expected sales performance in the last quarter of 2015, Dick Smith's poor ability to sell stock and slow ability to pay its creditors put them in serious financial trouble that they weren't able to escape from. And that's why they were put in administration by the company's creditors. Poor stock management held the company back and ultimately killed Dick Smith in the end. This was my local store at Ringer Mall. This store opened in 2000, originally as a powerhouse store. Unsurprisingly, this is the only photo to exist of the store, taken after it was closed down. I went here many times during the last days of the store to get some good deals on electronics. In fact, I bought my previous gaming mouse during Dick Smith's closing down sales, and I only upgraded it very recently. I also bought this mouse pad which I've used for over 5 years. Plenty of other things I own come from Dick Smith, which is reflective of how much of an impact the store had on Australians over the years. I did not take photos of the store closing because I was younger when all this happened, but I do remember how empty the store was in its final days. Kind of a bit surreal if you think about it. Dick Smith Electronics was a product of its time, when brick and mortar retailing of electronics products was the norm with its product range having expanded and eventually shifting towards consumer electronics as was popular from the late 1990s. At the end, it was technology, ironically, that caught up to them, and the company was being faced with a declining retail sector and stock management problems that led to them being vulnerable to that declining retail sector, causing them to go from boom to bust in under six months. If you didn't know, on Twitter, I announced that I am working on a brand new series. In this video, I'll be making that announcement. Over the course of a number of years, I have grown up watching many Sonic animation series, big and small, come and go. As my stop motion skills grew with films like The Junkers, I aspired to be like these content creators, Pitbull Fan 77, Super Sonic Boom, As Fast As Lightning, Lifeline, etc. With all the series that I grew up watching now gone, I have decided it is my turn to continue their legacy by developing a new Sonic animation series that will be developed as a long-term project alongside my traditional abandoned videos and other content. Today I am announcing a brand new Sonic stop-motion series, Sonic Legends. 
This is just the logo. At the moment, this is all that exists of the series apart from scripts and storyboards, but that won't be for too much longer. The first episode of Sonic Legends will be launching in February 2019. This will be the first of many more to come. A sneak preview of that episode will be released by the new year. Hey guys, for those of you that are unaware, I am continuing on the Lost Darling Harbour series. If you are new to this channel and missed out on the last episode, click on the link in the video or in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, give me a like, and if you want to see more, press that subscribe button down below. Thanks.